there's a lot of spirits influencing this question. Um, but when we have near-death experiences, we go to this, into this, a lot of us anyway, go into this amazingly loving space. And there's a mob of them around who are really confused, who've done that, who are really confused about where they are now. Right, yep. And very good question. And, and it's very important I answer this for the spirits sake as well. When you're in, the, in a near-death experience, what happens is you go out of body and generally, because because it's at the time of your potential passing, lots of very high spirits surround you in this particular state. And when I say lots, there can be spirits from anywhere, from the second sphere to the celestial spheres surrounding you, but often there is a lot of celestial spirits in the, involved in the process of anybody's passing. And what they do is they surround you in this sort of altered state, being able to nurse you through the process of death, if you like. Now, many people then come back to the earth, back into their body, and assume that that demonstrates their true condition, which is not a valid assumption. Because what, in that place, what you've had is literally sometimes tens, if not, if not more, people surrounding you, protecting you in the place of your passing. And the reason why it's, done, it's a loving thing that's done, every time any person passes, they are surrounded by spirits who will assist them through the process of transition from their earth life to the spirit life. Now, that process of transition often goes through an intermediary phase, which we'll talk about during the course of these discussions. And the intermediary phase is like, you could think of it like almost like a hospital, where, where, where it's sort of in a fairly lovely grounds, fairly pretty place, prettier than Earth, you know, top of the first sphere condition, which is prettier than Earth, paradisaic type of condition. And, uh, and then because of the feelings of euphoria that the person who's about to pass has, they then assume that that is a reflection of their own condition. But it is not. It is a temporary place that it happens to every single person where it's possible to happen, and there are times when it's not, where spirits are assisting them in the process of the, trans the transition between death from, of the, from the earth and life in the spirit world. And, uh, and so we can't assume that just because we've had a lovely experience in our near-death experience, that our actual condition will bring us or attract us to the same location when we actually do pass. And there are many spirits who have, who have had near-death ex experiences on earth and then made the assumption that they would pass into the same place that they had the experiences with and that is a gross misrepresentation of, the, of what actually happens to them. What happens when they do pass, as we'll explain in a minute uh, if we get there this, today, um, is that they, they, um, their soul condition attracts them to their true location after a period of transition. So let me ask them, Brian, if you can answer these questions. Did all of them experience a period of transition where they had a, a few days where they felt like they were in an okay place, a bit like a hospital type thing, or, or, or did they instantly go to a darker place that, they, that their soul drew, drew them to? Um, most of them had a sort of, the, the sort of experience that you describe, lovely gardens, even nice people, everything's a lot brighter, yep. everything's a lot more compassionate even. Exactly. And then when they started to see their condition in the mirror, what happened then? Freak out. Yeah. So they looked at oh, their... Oh, goodness. Shocking. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Very, yeah. Yeah. So what Very happened? scary, actually. So if you imagine, if you look, if you are not aware, but you are actually deformed, like your the whole body, your face, everything looks deformed, which is a mirror of your soul condition in the sweet, in the, depending on what your condition is. But for most people, when they pass, their body is quite deformed, right? It looks older than a hundred years old, their spirit body, uh, for most people, and worse than that for most people, right? When they pass. And I'm talking, when I say most people, I'm talking like 99.9% .9 of the population passes in this condition, right? So you imagine you're welcomed into a place that's got nice surroundings, you know, there's no mirrors anywhere. <laughs> and, there's a, you know, and 
you're surrounded by a lot of lovely, fa pretty faces, and lovely, everyone seems lovely to you, and they're real compassionate and kind and understanding and everything else. These are the people who are assisting you through the process of transition, and they are in good condition. And then occasionally you will see a person who's really ugly, and sometimes more than occasionally, like quite frequently, you'll see a person that's really ugly, and you might ask the person you're with, oh, why are they looking like that for? And the person you're with will say, oh, you know, that's because of their condition and what they did on earth. And, and you'll go, oh, I'm glad I'm not in that condition, right? And, and you do a bit more. And then after a while, you, you realise, actually, maybe you are in that condition because some of those people are looking funny at you. Right? And this has been the experience. Some of them nodding at the moment, yeah. yeah. Maybe some of these people are looking funny at you. And then, then you have a desire to look at your own condition. And when you look at your own condition, that's when you get the shock. But it's also the point where you no longer stay at the location that you were welcomed at in the spirit world. And what happens is where you stay now is you're automatically attracted through your soul to the location that, you're, that matches your soul condition. So the location you're drawn to in the spirit world will now match your very appearance. So if you look 200 years old and the skin's falling off your bone, no, it's not funny because many of these spirits, spirits have had this experience, right? So we need to not laugh at them. It's not funny. Yeah. Many of these spirits, spirits have had their flesh falling off their bones in the spirit state, I mean, their spirit flesh, if you like, falling off their bones. And, and sockets for eyes where they can barely see out of terrible, terrible, like they're hundreds and hundreds of years old but still alive and once they saw that condition they went to the same location in the spirit world where everybody else is in that same condition now if you can imagine the shock of that you get some kind of impression how most people are shocked when they pass does that make sense? how are they feeling Brian? Um. There's a smallish group of them who are, um, are, are crying right now yeah. and they're grateful for hearing the story. Now, the thing I'd like to say to them, though, is they don't have to stay in that condition. Yeah, that small group have got that. I, they, that's that's awesome. actually in their cells now. Awesome. And so their condition is just a reflection of the emotions and their beliefs and their desires and passions that are out of harmony with love and they can change those things. And they'll get plenty of assistance when they want that assistance to change. So everywhere in the spirit world, there are literally thousands of people wanting to help. So they, you know, there's many bright spirits around them who want to help them, but the process of grieving is, part, is a part of the process of change. Yeah, this crying happened, I can yeah, yeah. completely you, you. you know that feeling, Brian, that you had of the shock yeah. it'll be great for you to write down something about that because most people on earth have no idea how much they're going to get a shock that shock just now yeah. yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. and, and the, the truth is that if we knew how much we were going to get a shock the majority of us would want to change now <laughs> rather than later that's the truth yeah. right? many of you now are personally going through your own shocks right? about what your really condition is compared to what you thought it was, right? Well, you imagine passing without that knowledge. You imagine passing with the feeling that you were going to be fine, your body looks fine and everything else, and then all of a sudden, like, you've been a week or two weeks in the nice sleep state experience, which looks to be the same as your near-death experience if you had one, and then all of a sudden things start changing when you see yourself. Have they got any more questions, Ron? They're crying a fair bit, so. Yeah, the, 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 yeah they, also, they also feel that they can help some of the others now too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the key is to realise for all of us is to realise that our condition is not as we judge it, but rather God's laws judge our condition. And God's laws don't change. Right? And this is something that we need to really bear in mind is that down here on earth, you can falsify things a fair bit, you know? Well, you, you look at what we do. Like if you're a woman, you might dress up in a nice pretty dress, put on a bit of makeup. Now you look pretty different, right? Than what you looked 10 minutes earlier. That's one way we falsify ourselves. But there's another way we do it quite frequently, and that is we have some very dark, often, desires and, and, and emotions in our soul 
that we refuse to acknowledge in our awake state. And imagine coming face to face with how they have harmed your body in the sleep state soon after you pass. Like, imagine that process. Very confronting process. <laughs> 